All righty. Good evening, everybody. Just taking just a minute to let some people to join. Bear with me for just a second. Those of you who are here, just give me a yes if you can hear me. Sweet. Looks like I'm coming through. All right, guys, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the uh, Hurley Investments Market View Commentary. Have some things I'd like to go over with you this evening. Uh, obviously, Kevin is not here. Keith Bybee with you this evening to go over some some things this week. Uh, we'll let uh, Kevin off the hook for the for the evening as he has uh, sadly had a niece pass away over the weekend in a uh, incredibly sad and uh, surprising turn of events, and uh, he is helping a brother out um, with. Uh, those uh, um, I guess the sad logistics of having to uh, take care of of uh, of those affairs so um, give our thoughts and prayers to Kevin and his his family especially his brother and uh, and wife obviously um, just incredibly sad um, not uh, sure on too much of the details, but I'll uh, if Kevin is uh, is available next week to uh, share those with you, I'll let him take care of that. Um, so starting off today, um, we've gone through a month in September. Just to give you a a little recap on the month. It was a uh, crappy down month as usual. We did much, I'll say capital, all caps, much better than the market. And, and enjoyed. Some nice profits on puts. Through that month. Uh, yes. September is usually that month. Mark, uh, excuse me, October. I don't know why I said March. Um, October is kind of hit, and, hit or miss. Although last few years has typically carried on with uh, a crappy September. And typically since the last couple of years, it hasn't seemed like we've seen um, buying in until end October and into November to start a Christmas rally. So the question is, will this bearish trend in our market continue into October? So that's the question of the month.
Abraham says no. So you're already answering all my questions, Abraham. I guess uh, we can just wrap it up now. You've got it all figured out. Tell me why. Why do you think no, Abraham? <laughs> because you have glasses. All right. Give me more. <laughs> While you're thinking about that, um, let me just bring up our big picture from briefing that we typically typically go over. There's a couple other things I feel like uh, can help us get an idea for what's going on and what our October could look like. So I just took a couple of snippets. Um, it looks like I accidentally did it twice, so let me fix that. But a couple of things that uh, are affecting our market, I meant to do this one. There we go. Back here. That's what I'm looking to do, just to give you guys the meat of commentary there. Abraham says uh, interest, I, I assume you're saying interest rates are perceived at a top almost. Okay, that could be definitely one, one thing. So let's go through it. You guys, you're welcome to put in your two cents. Here's what we've got coming up. Uh, they're, they've bullet pointed some issues out there that support the view that things should be slowing down. Student loan payments are to resume October 1st. That's a neg mark for a negative. Oil prices are stubbornly high and drivers continue to be saddled with high gas prices. Another negative. U.S. government seemingly looks headed for a shutdown the update there obviously is if, if you guys haven't seen that is they've kicked the can down the road for 45 more days while they hash out what to do and there's on the republican side the threat of uh getting rid of uh bringing up a vote to get rid of the uh, uh mccarthy as the um speaker of the house um uh, republicans obviously are trying to not continue to do this thing where we kick the can down the road and we need to uh balance the budget so to speak stop spending on things that just are uh things that uh they feel we shouldn't be spending money on um including your ukraine um war spending and all sorts of other things. Uh, China's post-COVID economic recovery efforts have been sluggish. Uh, and they have their Evergrande issues. Uh, we've, it's been a couple of years since we brought that up, but the building empty apartment complexes all over that just aren't getting filled. Um, property, so their property market is not great. The United Auto Workers Union, uh, I, I guess it's Union of Auto Workers. I, I don't actually know, <laughs> but that's the union. It's about to enter its third strike week against the big three autom automakers, so there hasn't been a re resolution there. Uh, another negative, um, Fed, ECB, Bank of England, many other central banks all seem inclined to keep rates higher for longer. And that is the tune, uh, I would say probably the number one issue we're dealing with. And the last 
point they have lag effect of prior rate hikes has yet to show up in any meaningful way in a broader sense. So a couple of negatives there, more than a couple, but higher for longer has been the issue of the last couple of weeks since uh, the Fed uh, came out and said that's what they're looking at doing. And we do have a couple of answers to some of those. We've kicked the can down the road for the US government shutdown. We've uh, got a PCE. Let's see if I can find that. PCE, we need to go to our. Actually, you know what? I think I have, have it here in my article. I've linked down at the bottom. And uh, I mean, we can probably just go over this anyways, but PCE inched up lower than expected. Um, part of the reason that's important is it's the Federal Reserve's preferred measure of inflation. So it went up, but but minimally and uh, lower than the forecast. So that was a positive. Um, we've come off a bad quarter, the shutdown suspended, auto strikes expand, they're kind of, this is more of what we've talked about, but I'll let you, I'll let you guys read this later, just giving you kind of the, uh, kind of some of the meat and overview of some of these things. Um, Yes, I think that's all I want to say about that one. It's a good, quick article to overview. But what it all means, um, their idea is, yes, we have higher rates for longer and obviously our stock market should uh, and can do much better in the long term than a 5% yields are maybe doing right now. But the idea is that for the short term, it's uh, maybe not enough right now um, to boost a big comeback in our market that continues for a while just because of all these unresolved issues um so let's see let's read what why chase the possibility of a five percent rally in the stock market when you can stay parked in a money market fund yields five percent or a three-month t-bill that yields five and a half uh, I suppose it comes down to risk tolerances and, and assumptions the stock market can do much better than that but the stock market will do uh, the much better that, than that in the long term. It's, it's the near term that is in question and is expectation in this elevated period of uncertainty about the near term outlook that investors will seek more comforting answers outside the stock market. So I, I like that, I, that uh, commentary. I agree that uh, we might not get a huge, big boost and boom. Um, comment from Jim. Energy prices will remain elevated as, as leases are being slow walked all in on green energy reckless abandon going into winter. May have rolling blackouts if bad weather sets in. I think October will look like September. Thanks, Jim. Well, it certainly could. Um, end of last week, the market was trying to fight back. You can, if I can just zoom in here. And uh, check out our bars. Looked like we were getting a nice big bounce last three days. And uh, 
opened up big what Friday and just couldn't couldn't hold any gains. Opened up um pretty much where we closed today. But uh, a lot of stocks were really starting to kind of take off a little bit uh, while others were uh, down. And I think that that looks like a typical end of month, beginning of month, rebalancing. Some stocks are getting bought into, some are getting um, taken away from. Not much of a surprise. And I can tell you, I'm pretty glad we didn't uh, rip any protection off. But, uh, you know, as we look at a few things individually, we might, uh, we might take a look at that. And we have our SPY put spread on for our accounts. Um, Give me just a second. Bear with me, folks. Taking care of a little business. All right, back with you. Sorry about that. So let's see, where was I? Markets can't really take off at least the s p but we're looking at um, we've got our spy puts we had a bear bear put spread on the spy and on thursday we had that up day where we could book a little profit a nice profit and paid for about a quarter quarter of our cost on our short side of the short puts so now we're just out there with long puts on the spy that gave us, um, you know, a little profit that uh, we could get better downward protection if things continue to go down. Um, I would love to see the market just do what we need it to do, what we'd like to see it do, and just fall down to 4,200 where the market will have a better chance of seeing a, buy, a technical buying point. And uh, at that point, we have a little more confidence on what, what is going on. Um, but honestly, I don't know if we're going to see that. We've been stopping here at the 42. We'll call it 42.70 spot. Uh, a little bit of trading back in June. Just kind of stopped there. Um, not a huge support level or resistance level that I can draw on, but it's kind of something. And what could uh, reverse things from here? I will tell you as I go through a couple things individually. But what do you guys think? If let's play the devil's advocate, what what can be somewhat of a buy-in, at least for a little bit? Yeah, take a look at three different charts. I want you to tell me what you see. This is Apple. Didn't quite get down to their 200 day. In fact, I probably said 50 day. I meant 200 if that's the case. Just in case I fumbled my words. But we had a a day where it came down to 167 and, and rallied. We've had a rally the last couple of days in Apple, um, mostly from what I see as, uh, well, not what I see, but what I've noticed 
um, from uh, better analyst uh, predictions. Um, uh, upgrades is the word I was looking for, analyst upgrades. We have Google coming down, testing over a good week and a half, this 50 day on Google, couldn't stay over 137, 138. And now breaking back above today, the 50 day. And then we have Meta. Meta has basically followed this 50 day for a month and a half. Fell below it, bounced back up, tried to test it again, fell below it. Basically all of August, since halfway through August when it fell below it, couldn't get back above and then spent all of September either trading right below it or trying to stay above it with not much success. So kind of weird today to see a big bounce up a couple of percent almost. And I think it was more like 1.7 or 8% up today. So not a bad update for Meta. But as I'm taking a look at uh, the history here, there's several updates where it just bounces nicely above that 50 day and then just doesn't look so good. But again, another one where we have analyst upgrades and we've got their oculus that will be competing stronger with the uh, apple's new uh, virtual goggles so those three stocks were the big market bucking stocks few others across the market but tech stocks and if i pulled up the cues it was a up day for the nasdaq so my thought was that morning, oh, I got to look at maybe taking off puts for Meta, for Apple, for uh, a few people that have Google. Started to kind of pair back towards the middle of the day and then kind of came back towards the end of the day. But as I looked at charts for these three stocks, it just didn't make sense to me why I'd be taking puts off of a stock that's just coming back to a strong support and resistance level. I need to see some confirmation there. So I'm hoping you kind of saw the same thing. One seventy five. That's my line in the sand for Apple. We're looking at a better update tomorrow. I may take those ones off. We've got Google. For me, it just didn't seem like one day was our trend. 
yes, we have a couple days, but really this is the first day Google is back above our 50 day. And we've got, excuse me, we've got Google fully collared. So we hold the 50 day tomorrow. I think I'm looking at taking puts off and leaving our calls, covered calls up at 140 on as we've got a little more credit in there. That I'd like to book. And then Meta, I just need to see something more um, concrete and holding above this 50 day. So these are all the technical things, technical charts that I'm looking at on what we might do here. But you know, I don't love that our market really didn't uh, confirm with those stocks what they were doing. It, they were bucking the trend. So what do you guys think? Are those tech stocks, they've been upgraded? Are they bucking the trend because they're the greatest tech stocks and uh, we're gonna go start our Christmas rally now? Or was it just a day that uh, is the beginning, first day, first trading day of the month where uh, rebalancing and buying in is occurring? Which one do you guys think? Rebalancing. Or starting a new bullish trend. Jim says rebalancing. Dave says rebalancing. The honest answer, folks, is nobody knows for sure, obviously, but I think it could be both. Rebalancing, which is why it bucked the trend today. But I think we're not going to see a continuation of that until we see the market follow through together with those. Could be wrong, and certainly the NASDAQ has um, had fallen further in 2022 and just recovered further in 23 and, and uh, up to this summer, of course. But I just don't know if the current sentiment is there for us. This is our NASDAQ spot, uh, ETF, QQQ. Didn't quite get back up to the highs. All right. I've listed some estimated earnings dates. We've got those coming up. And uh, showing you these follows my next point, which is, can we get some good earnings coming into the Christmas season uh, mid-fall, right? We get our Christmas rally. You look at a lot of these, they're not until later October, end of October, 
you know, we have our banks that are typically in the middle, in the first in the earnings season. But a lot of this stuff is until 23rd, 24th in our estimated earnings dates that could, uh, could boost for us. Where will our markets end this week? I'm gonna say lower to flat. Um, like they pointed out up here on this, I think there is some level of, of the fact that our market is a little oversold. You look here on our RSI, we're having a little bounce off of oversold from last week. We keep testing that and keep going down. We'll bounce off of that RSI once again. So I do feel at some point, and may not be this week, but I do feel like uh, as our chances would have it, we're going to see some buying in since our market is oversold. And that's going to be our number one reason. Already having some of that more on the NASDAQ again. But that's going to be my number one reason why we might see um, a little bit of buying in. We, of course, have all of these reasons we've discussed up here that are weighing on the market. But we have a couple of good things. What we were worried about yesterday, or at least last week, was the government shutdown. And we also have good PCE um a good pce number coming in which is which is an important one or at least according to the fed i'll get to that one in a minute jim but great point um so for those reasons you know again i'd like to see the the market really get down to here to, to a really oversold and uh, give us a better base to jump off of. But a couple of those positives could be the reason um, we're seeing some things bounce a little bit and could be a reason that uh, maybe we end flat, who knows. Where will our S&P end October? I'm gonna say up 1% just on the fact that uh, S the, excuse me, the September was crappy enough. And for the technical bounce at some point of buying in to start our Christmas rally. Those are my thoughts. Earnings, the only one of note that I noticed was Levi's coming up Thursday. That'll give us a good uh, pre precursor for retail. Um, Nike looked uh, great with their sales numbers a few, a few weeks ago. That definitely helped. Under Armour for a minute, not long. 
at a bounce off of 650 and kind of pairing back a little bit. So another big one here, we've got jolts tomorrow. That's our, our uh, let's see if I can go find our economic calendar. We don't want earnings. Here we go. So tomorrow we have job openings. We've got Wednesday ISM non-manufacturing -manu index, employment, lots of the employment stuff. We have crude oil inventories. Speaking of high gas prices. So these are some of the things that uh, I feel are important right now, um, job openings, ISM non-manufacturing, ADP employment change. These are some of the things I feel like can tell us if uh, our economy is slowing down a bit. Just to look at a little bit of an explanation on today's ISM index, this chart is showing manufacturing slowing down, econ which uh, translate the, to the economy slowing down a bit. And this is from September, or you know, this is rearward looking. Uh, anything below 50% on this indicator is showing a contraction and obviously expansion if it's above. So stuff like this, we're keeping an eye on just because that's what our Fed is looking at. That's what everybody's looking at to figure out uh, you know how uh, how the economy is is uh, slowing down, where where the Fed will be happier to keep rates where they're at instead of raising them more here at the end of the year. And then uh, more employment Thursday and Friday. How am I looking to trade? So I've been hinting at this kind of stuff for our whole evening here, but looking at individual stocks to decide. where we can take some profits on puts again. Meta, Google, we'd have to be taking them on off for a, a little bit of a cost. So they've come, come up a bit. Apple, we'd if it stays where it's at or goes down, we'll take those off for a profit. And pretty much everything else that's just really gone down. Thinking Disney, having a profit there from the last two weeks. Boeing, 
a ridiculous profit on our puts for Boeing and look how oversold that is. My goodness. And we, I believe we had some profit in covered calls on Boeing, which is always lovely to add in there. We've got our banks, Bank of America. We've got puts we can take profits on. We've got JP Morgan. Although it's kind of gone sideways, we've caught the good upper end of that. We've got, uh, and of course, not a ton of people with shares of JP Morgan, but most everybody for sure has Bank of America. Under Armour is another big one. Lots of things we can be taking profit from. We have the spy puts that are about, about at their break even. Let me actually pull up the spy chart. So 426 is where we got those. And we booked a profit, as I told you early, are on the short side of the that bear put. So we only have long puts now, but at a lower cost basis. So another one we could be taking a nice profit from if it continues to go down. Guys, that does it for me. Is there any questions or anything else you would like me to go over? As, as negative as a lot of this stuff is, you know, I think the, the few positives we've gone over aren't uh, aren't terribly small and any of these economic reports could change things pretty quickly for us as well thoughts questions concerns i also linked this uh Quick article down here. Let me get some of the gibberish deleted. This article goes over New York Stock Exchange composite patterns as well as the S&P for worst and best months. A common theme seems to be January. September, June, February. This one comes from back to 2003 to 2022. This, these bars are showing the amount of times that these months in between those years were positive. Obviously, the lower the number, the fewer times those were finished positive. Here's between 2013 and 2022, kind of more exaggerated, January, February, August, September. December doesn't look so good lately either, last 10 years. We come down here to the NASDAQ for our tech stocks. More often it was February, June, and September, where their best month was July. That was the last 20 years. We look at the last 10 years. February, June, September, still crappy months. But, October kind of hit and hit or miss, not great, not bad. Same with the uh, last uh, 10, or excuse me, last 20, kind of an average month. 
November looks really good for our tech going into Christmas. And again, for the S&P, it's just kind of hit or miss. All right, guys, not seeing any questions. Uh, Jim, you had mentioned Friday may be up on low volume before the holiday. That's a, a good point to remember. And uh, let's see, what is it? Columbus Day. And our market, I believe, is still open on Columbus Day. I'm 99% sure. Twenty twenty three. Yep, we don't have Columbus Day off. Just wanted to confirm. So it's not that it's going to be a three day weekend for our market. So Indigenous Peoples Day. Thanks, Jim. <laughs> All right, guys, not seeing anything else. Thanks for joining me. Um, I've got things uh, taken care of for Kevin as he's kind of focused on family stuff for this week. So don't uh, hesitate to call out to me, email, whatever you, you feel that you need to do. Um, I'm just at Kiev. K E V E at hurleyinvestments.com for my email. I'm sure uh, Kevin in the past has uh, emailed my my phone number. You can look that up as well. But all right, guys, thanks for joining me. Talk to you later. Take care. <laughs>